Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome one and all to Soulful Sunday. Today is soulful because a lot of things are going to come our way. What are those things? Firstly, I believe that we won't always do everything at the first go. This is my belief. I could be wrong completely. If it is so, then please today let's correct ourselves. So there were three movies that we had to watch and today is the third Sunday. So if we watched uh, Thin Grow Rich, Fantastic Pick Mark. If we have watched Pollyanna movie, Fantastic Done. If we watch Secret Movie, Fantastic Done. If we have not watched Today is the Day to complete them. Why do I insist on them? Simply because once we see something for a matter of an hour and a half, it resonates in our mind. This is what we want to adopt. This is what people have been doing. And this is what will lead me to a way of a good life. And uh, before I start this, let's have a thought for the day. Today is all about flowing. And let's understand one thing. What is the importance of flow? So Lao Tzu says, be still like a mountain and flow like a river. So today we are people in progress. We are going to make ourselves steadfast, sturdy, tall, and absolutely wonderful, like a mountain, like a tree which is rooted, and we're going to flow like a river. And this way we'll embrace whatever is coming in our life with open arms. Even if uh, things are not going the way we want, let's embrace them because let's understand that's what life is all about. And today we'll be launching the Angel Guardians form. So thank you everyone who's been uploading for their groups on behalf of the subgroups. I'm very inspired by a lot of you. Um, uh, in men, I think Prakash is doing a fantastic job. In women, a lot of you are doing a fantastic job. So congratulations to all of you for uploading diligently. From tomorrow, your scores start. We want you to have some time to understand the concept and not push it too much. So now for the, group, for the Facebook Sangha, the one-to-one -one Sangha on the Facebook, Please just upload your uh, reflections and your one flyer that you're inspired with. Uh, your blessings and gratitude is something which is your personal thing you want to share, more than welcome. Otherwise, keep them to your sub -sanghas. The only idea to put them in sub -sanghas is that, you know, you've done it. Again, some people have requested me that you don't like to share them completely, not like visible. That's fine. Blur them up. It's all right. Today, if you're not so open about it, it's all right. Tomorrow, if you're open, share it the way it's visible. Look, we're not in a kindergarten school. We don't tell each other what to do, what not to do. We're telling each other what's the right forum to do it. Just the basic thing to align us. Once we graduate in our journey of the one-to-one -one days, everything is going to be wonderful. So let the entire process unfold. I love the creativity. So I love the affirmations coming in beautifully in a very uh, lovely way. And I saw... You know, um, one person has been doing forever. She's inspiring everyone. The other people have started. I love the logo creation. I love everything. Ashish is one logo is now uh, being used by two, three, uh, you know, groups. So the Kamal and the feelings. It's beautiful. Everyone's evolving. So lovely. So yesterday last was, I think, uh, uh, Sanya. So it's lovely to see that. Now, if you have questions about this entire unfolding and you ask, uh, you're asking your catalysts and boosters, go ahead and ask them. Yesterday, some of you asked, you know, can you please share your personal affirmations, ka, you know, audio or your manifestation? Ka? So let me just tell you something. Let's gradually take things at a time. So yesterday, when I had given this assignment of just concentrating on one thing, which you talked about in the power of subconscious mind called the autoimmune suggestion, or just work on one manifestation, I have made a sample video and uploaded it yesterday morning. It's called the autoimmune suggestion. So if you've gone through it, uh, Amrita has personally posted it to you. It's already on the YouTube. So that's come your way. Uh, somebody said, why is the health uh, manifestation in my patient sent? Do we have to do something about it? So it is just an additional thing which the evening batch wanted <clears throat> in Hindi. So I've done that for them. So if you think you want to do it for your health, go ahead, do it. It's not mandatory. <clears throat> Sorry. And thank you for bringing to my notice that the divine love meditation was a little blurry and not so clear. So we got the better, so unfortunately, when the team uh, developed, you know, uploaded it, we did not go in an HD version. So it was a little blurry, but now the better version is installed. So they will take off the old one because the new one is already there. That's it about our team. Any Sunday questions, any life reflections? Because today we have a little longer session, like a 10 minute long minutes, a 10 minute longer session. So any questions, please feel free. And uh, about the higher self, uh, we are in this world of creative visualization, Shakti Gavain's world. Higher self will be a part of it if you truly want the magic to unfold. And if you want to read it like a first-time reader, just read it and you do it later. I'm okay. 
So she wanted flow with the first time we when we did it in the first batch, we never found the higher self, right? Not, not most of us did not. So if you're comfortable with that, it's fine. If you want to do a deep dive and want to find the higher self, the meditation is uploaded. Who is the higher self? Simply, we have a soul, and the soul has a name, and the soul has a back, and that soul has a way to connect with us. So how do we go spiritually deep down? By simply intertwining ourselves with him or her or it, whatever. So that's about it. Any questions, any doubts, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, we'll start with a pixel programming. Itish, sir, let's start. If you have questions, please just write them. And you can do it after the big stage. So let's go for it. Now the left leg is in front, right in the back, come up bent, knee a little bent, and let's run. In a wonderful game of life. Let's live it and let's understand what is our life going to teach us today morning. Ritesh, sir, let's start the first book. Whoever wishes to read can please raise their hand so that we can we know that you're going to be reading for us. So more power to everyone. A sweet reading. How wonderful. Shivani Asmita is reading. You can come here tomorrow. Thank you so much. So today is about, so Siddharth Vanna, me is not in the chat box, we just simply raise our hands. Today, Asmita is reading for us. Tomorrow, please come up and that's perfect. Today is about outflowing. What is outflowing? Let's understand the science to understand how we can outflow. Asmita, over to you. Ritesh, sir, uh, I'm, I've asked Asmit, yes, please, with the hope over now. Good morning. Good morning. Outflowing. Another key principle is that giving or outflowing. The universe is made of pure energy, the nature of which is to move and flow. The nature of life is constant change, constant flux. When we understand this, we tune into its rhythm and we are able to give and receive freely, knowing that we never really lose anything but constantly gain. Once we begin to learn to accept the goodness of the universe, we naturally want to share it as well, realizing that as we give out of our energy, we make space for more to flow into us. When through insecurity, fear... Simple, simple thing. 
Yes. So a simple example for this is if you have a cluttered mirror and you want to put in more clothes that you've just bought, where do you put them? You can't put them because the mirror is <clears throat> too cluttered, too full. So what do you do? You have to take out a couple of garments, give them for charity, or probably, probably put them somewhere in storage and then add the new ones. Similarly in life, we have to unclutter. And for this to realize that the more space we're making in life for goodness, the more energy is flowing in us. So which means any old baggages, any negative uh, doubts, we just flow with them by embracing them. How do you flow? We simply embrace what negative is there in us by simply, simply accepting it firstly and thinking of a way to change. And then we start flowing. Yes, let's continue. When through insecurity, fear, and a feeling that there isn't enough, we try to hold on to or cling to what we have. We begin to cut off this wonderful flow of energy. In the process of hanging on to what we have, we fail to keep the energy moving and we don't make space for new energy to come to us. Energy takes many forms, such as love, affection, appreciation, and recognition, material possessions, money, and friendship. The principles apply equally to all these forms. If you look around, if you look around you at those who are most unhappy, you'll often find that there are people who have a starved feeling in some way and, th and are therefore taking a very grasping posture towards life. They feel that life is general and other people in particular are not giving them what they need. It is as if they have a strange hold, stranglehold of life, trying desperately to to trying desperately to wring out the love and satisfaction they crave, yet actually choking off the supply. And many of us have a little of this tendency. So are we realizing the pattern in ourselves? As Shakti Given is leading us into outflowing and Asmeet is reading for us, are we realizing that energy is everywhere? Everything is made of energy. It's got many forms. Even our feelings are energy. So if you are actually wanting love, and you're holding on to love by keeping by asking everyone, you don't love me enough, you don't love me enough, especially parents with children, you know, you don't have time for us, you're just busy in your social media or your laptops or your own virtual world. Where is the time for us? You are choking them. Relationships are not meant to be held so tight. You spend time with them in things that they love, and that's bonding time enough. There's no need for them to come to you. Similarly, with your counterparts. You don't love me enough. You're not spending time enough with me. You're busy in your own world. You know, you're coming from office and this is what you're doing. I'm just sitting at home. Whatever, whatever, whatever you can say. This is not the way it works. You're not supposed to be desperate to hold on. Remember, if you're desperate, if you're holding on to tight, you're going to strangle the relationship. You're going to wring out all the love from it. So just give breathing space and just flow in life. Don't have this tendency and it's very human to have the tendency. If you have it, it's fine, but time for a reality check. Let's move for us. When we find that place within ourselves that is giving, we begin to reverse the flow. True giving happens not from a space of sacrifice or self-righteousness or an idea of spirituality, but for the pure pleasure of it, because it's fun. It can only come from a full loving place. We each have an infinite supply of love and happiness within us. We have been accustomed to thinking that we have to get something from outside, from outside of us in order to be happy. But in truth, it works the other way. We must learn to contact our inner source of happiness and satisfaction and flow it outward to share with others. Not because it is virtuous to do so, but because it feels really good. Once we tune into it, we just naturally want to share it because that is the essential nature of love. And we are all loving beings. So being humans means that we are looking for companionship. And yes, that's very, very few of us are happy without company. So let give the good news is you're complete. How? It's not just you. You have a higher self in you. All of us do want somebody to be spoken to somebody to have our back and the best news is the person who has our back or the soul that has our back is know it all Infin infinitely wisdom intelligent 
infinite pool of resources, supply, knowledge, everything. And what are we looking for? Why are we looking for happiness outside? Why are we looking for love outside? Why are we being self-righteous? Okay, this is what I think is right. This is not what you're thinking. Why have this ego game? And sometimes people blame the others that you know you have ego, not realizing what is ego. Ego is something to be shelved off. It's not something to be embraced. But if somebody is saying you, you have ego, let them say it. Don't counteract it. Just don't counteract it. Just remember in life we must flow and if possible, find our higher self because that will truly make us flow with life. Now let's read further. As we outflow our loving energy, we make room for more to flow into us. We soon discover that this process feels so good in itself, we just want to do it more and more. And the more you share of yourself from this space, the more you seem to get more from the world because of the outflow inflow principle. Nature abhors a vacuum. So as you outflow, you create space into which something must flow. Giving becomes its own reward. When we fully understand and live this principle, we have manifested our innately loving nature. Remember, however, that giving from a healthy place means being able to say no when giving doesn't feel right. That you can't continue to give unless you are equally open to receiving. And that giving also means giving to yourself. So first thing is me, it's actually love is loving ourselves. And that's something most of us have not learned ever because that's the way we've been brought up. But that's fine. The good news is we can all now start to loving ourselves. The day you accept yourself the way you are, automatically you love life. Automatically you'll never think, oh, I'm compromising. Oh, I'm giving in when I'm not a receiver. Automatically that entire flow will happen. You'll give and you'll get. You'll give and you'll get. But to give, you have to have also, right? So if you don't have it, how will you give it? And how will you have it? By simply embracing yourself the way you are. I love myself. I love my business. I'm giving my best. And if I'm not giving, then I'm the only person who can change it. And in case my body is not the way I want it, if it has weight on it, I'm the only one who can change it. How? By giving myself self-love. The first thing is I must give myself acceptance. I must love myself. I must affirm and change a life that I want. Because everything is possible in my world. So if everything is possible, if I can give myself love, then I can get give uh, love to others. If I'm ready to receive love, I'm ready to get it, then I'm ready to give it. So that's how it will be. So uh, again, please understand, we are the creators. We are not dependent upon anybody. Let's get this message very, very clear. If we are dependent upon somebody, it means we have that lack of that thing in our life. And lack is happening from this way, inward, not outward. Let's again go inward and think about it. This is time to reflect on how we are making ourselves because nature abhors people which has a vacuum. It abhors, it just wants to flow. Any gap is not good. So the gap is because of us. Let's get that gap. Let's bridge the gap and complete it. Yes, let's continue, please. When it comes to outflowing, practice makes perfect. You must consciously practice it in order to get the experience of how good it feels. Here are some exercises in outflowing you can try if you need some expansion in this area. Number one, make a point to express more appreciation to others in as many ways as you can think of. Sit, up, sit down right now and make a list of people to whom you would like to outflow love and appreciation and think of a way you can do to each one within the next week. Outflow can take the form of words, touching, a gift, a phone call or letter, money or any sharing of your talents that makes another person feel good. Choosing something that makes you feel especially good too, even if it's a little more difficult for you. Practice speaking more words of thanks, appreciation and admiration to people when you feel like it. It was kind of you to help me. I want you to know that I appreciate that. Your eyes are your eyes were shining and beautiful as you said that, and it made me feel good to see you. It's okay to say these things, even if you feel a little embarrassed. So yes, firstly, when you compliment others, you feel great about it. Trust me, 
you may be right now saying oh i have to fake it i don't feel it but when you get get in this good side of the world everything is possible because you will start seeing the goodness in people and you know we haven't actually picked up a phone ever chalo aaj compliment karte hain have you ever thought of it no but there are so many people we admire but we've never appreciated we've never admired them in the sense of telling them today is a day it's a sunday it's a perfect day as, as i said it's a soulful day so today uh, of course it will be part of your assignments sarita you're doing it because now you're in this magical world i'm talking to all the vet, uh, all the new new people here so if we understand that this beautiful science of sharing people sharing our love for people our appreciation our admiration for them is an expression of our being then how wonderful simply pick up the phone tell them how much they touch your life what is it that you can share you know all of us are absolutely full of talents we have so much of talent inside us but we have never realized right so it's very important to share our talents share something about us and share with people how wonderful they are what they mean to you and how their presence is you know mere phone call or mere or single message this is something i love about you and thinking about you just even that message on a whatsapp is going to brighten the lights of that friend of yours or that you know known person of yours so just be an unconditional giver you know people in india especially if i say uh, to a man that i love you it's like oh my god how could she say it he's not her brother he's not her husband hello he's my bestie or i love him for who he is why do i have to be so sexist you know he's a male i'm a female why love is love if i'm feeling it i say it as simple as that so let yourselves fall in love with life and people in your life you have a shine in your eyes have you ever seen your eyes how wonderful they are the minute the shine go that means you have dry eyes doctor will say oh put on some drops because you're meant to shine bright and we've not used this luster because longest of time we haven't been told this is a way to release ourselves to grow point number 1 today is very important of course it will be part of your assignments so you will be doing it point number 2 let's read go through your personal possessions and find items you don't really want or don't use very often and give them to others who will appreciate them more unclutter give for charity give for people who use more old books of your children or whatever just day before we like in the basement we finished so many laptops that were lying extra and they're not in using so many books so many clothes so many stuff just unclutter tell children that every sunday one sunday in a month unclutter all of you do that and that they pick up your resources together and send it over to some orphanage or some charity home or somewhere people there will use it rather than taking out some 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 every day pick fix up a sunday and you make make a place in your area this is a give away corner that way you're giving away so much whatever you know there's so many toys that get broken for you it's a broken toy but for somebody it's a beautiful gift so please understand the art of giving and decluttering your home you know you have so many cups and mugs maybe that have broken handles rather than throwing them in the bin put them in a corner maybe the mug is fine the handle is broken for somebody they can use it somehow so think of things and just start giving them away they are very beautiful facts of you know the way the more you give the more you opening channels for getting number 3 if you are a person who tries to spend as little money as possible and always hunts for a bargain try spending a little money each day unnecessarily buy the product that costs a few cents more instead of less treat yourself to a little something extra pay for a friend's coffee or donate money to a good cause even a small action of this sort is a visible demonstration of yourself that you have that you have faith in the abundance that you have been affirming actions speak as loud as words in this case to take your in so again very yeah, so very important to understand that all of us need to pamper ourselves that's something we've never been taught I don't know in this group of a hundred plus of ours how many of us have actually taken a holiday on our own and just done what we love. How many of us have just probably gone to the spa, gone to the nature reserve, and just spent time with us or had a coffee by ourselves? I tell you, the feeling is liberating. I do that so freaking often. Be in the jungles of Madagascar alone in the nature reserve, no family, no friends, just me and my time. Maybe go to Norway and have the Nordic lights and see the Northern Lights, whatever. spend time you know uh, uh, now that we are part of rahul sir's uh, batch 
he tells us to go once a month to hotel check in go to the best of hotels spend time work for your factories your offices build your business but go time spend some time for a good meal just by yourself the first time when i went i just called for a room meal in fact i didn't even remember to call for meals i was so busy working start spending time you know indulge in yourself it's very important then you're opening the channels for abundance so you know the more that i spend the more i get don't hold on to stuff and you know it's a beautiful feeling to buy something afresh off the rack rather than always looking for schemes if you're looking for schemes you know what you're telling the universe you know i don't deserve the full price money i deserve a discounted price so please give me good discounts i'm not saying it's bad but why not be open for anything you know i i've gone with the open band i've got discount fantastic i love it i have abundance money saved money earned fantastic teeth your income is a very important point let's understand that teeth your income the thing is the practice of giving a percentage of your income to a church spiritual organization or a group of person that you feel is making a worthwhile contribution in the world it is a way of supporting that energy and at the same time acknowledging that all you receive comes from the universe therefore you give a token back to the universal source it doesn't matter what the percentage is even to think just a one, just 1% of your income will give you a continuous experience of outflowing you know why was india called sone ki chidiya before the before if you were, were explored uh, i mean uh, exploited because in our culture back then tithing was a very important tithing is a catholic term but dashansh was a very important term daswa hissa income ka was given for kalyan that's why india was a golden bird then hamare hinduism mein hai hamare sikhism mein sikhism mein daswan bolte hain of course internationally 1% is also good so it's okay you don't want to put a percentage don't put a percentage but fix it that maine is maine kiya kya if you're a homemaker you have a budget of a lakh to run your house and you've saved say 10000 out of it did i give 100 bucks out of it did i give a part of out of it very important to make a social contribution i'm not saying go to churches and go to mandirs and gurudwaras and you know i know uh, you know or uh, masjids and give it there i'm not saying go for religious stuff in fact i say don't even do that they have enough money because log uh, you know religion ke naam pe bahut dete hain pick up somebody a child who's on the street you know who's just not having good give him a packet of milk with a straw give him lot probably biscuits at least feed him or do something nice which makes you feel good you know there are so many people who don't winters me they don't have blankets give somebody something remember the more you give the more you get hamare paas kahan se aaya universe ne diya hai give it back to it's a energy so that's what i truly totally believe we can do it we should do it and you know i'm part of lady circle round table we have adopted schools as our projects we empower children with knowledge that's our we give it for education so if you can adopt a place the feel good factor is amazing oh didi or bhaiya have come again to denya hai you'll become like a santa claus we look forward to your visits so just go with that beautiful you know think of your ab mai ye laya diwali holi such beautiful festivals we have why not share the color why not share the joy you know old ages old age of homes up people don't have love there they've been left apart think of what you know you resonate with start to think start sharing sharing your joy number 5 which all of you are right now full on doing it be creative think of other ways to outflow your energy into the universe for the good of yourself and others yes so again we are thank you ritesh sir for this book now we'll move on to the power uh, and power of subconscious mm-hmm. mind so being creative is extremely important because all of us are born with infinite creativity now how we use our creativity and what we use our creativity completely depends upon us you want to help your friends you want to help your family you want to help the world go do it who's stopping you i saw pile harlalka's uh, you know um, a blackboard with the message yesterday and i'm forgetting the name the person says one of us who's sending a beautiful affirmation every day in calligraphy and the way she presented it yesterday with the bottle how lovely just see how people are getting creative just see the logos so whatever makes you feel creative creativity is expression of yourself so if you are doing that you know wonderful place so yesterday we talked about auto suggestions how auto suggestions come in our mind and how they take up richer yes thank you so much for giving me the email letter so let's understand that we can definitely make our life or break our life how do we do that 
Let's understand the power of constructive and destructive power suggestion. Yes, that's me. Let's read it. Some illustrations and comments on hetero suggestions. Hetero suggestions means suggestions from another person. In all ages, the power of suggestion has played a part in, in the life and thought of man in every period of time and in each country of the earth. In many parts of the world, it is the controlling power in religion. Suggestion may be used to discipline and control ourselves, but it can also be used to take control and command over others who do not know the laws of the mind. In its constructive form, it is wonderful and magnificent. In its negative aspects, it is one of the most destructive of all response patterns of the mind, resulting in patterns of misery, failure, suffering, sickness, and disaster. So, do you know how religions control us? Ye nahi kiya to ye ho jayega. We call fanatics. We are like, you know, big time to religions. Some religions do that, not all. There are some beautiful religions. Actually, all religions are beautiful, but there's some ways the way they're preached is beautiful. Like, you know, I'm a diehard fan of Sikhism. Die hard, man. I can't tell you how inspired I am. Why? Itna seva, itni seva, itni seva. Even the richest man in the world will be sitting and polishing his shoes, cleaning his shoes. Langar ki lare hote. And I've done that myself because my best friend was in the childhood, in my childhood. And it's just so beautiful. But there's some religions that hold you. Ye nahi kiya to aisa ho jayega. Ye nahi kiya. And who are doing that? The people who think that they are the people who, who the supreme being has made. So please understand that religions have to be followed the way they are. So how do you do them? If you're adhyatmic, if you're spiritual, go read them, yeah? Go read them rather than having learned from somebody who's just telling you something. Read it. People misconstrue. Islam is highly misconstrued. If you look at the books and if you look at what's being taught, completely it's gone off track. So... Just see the other side is so beautiful. People promote it beautifully. It's amazing. You fall in love with the religion. Just see, don't become so subjective to suggestions that, you know, and I will follow it. Because you shayad Pandit Ji, shayad Malvi Ji, shayad Ye, shayad Bo, shayad Priest. No. Don't, become, don't let them become a part of you. So hetero suggestion is largely followed by people's suggestions on you. First thing is, it could be religious. Second thing is how people do that with you. Let's understand that science further. Have you accepted any of these? Let's understand this, please. Have you accepted any of these? From infancy on, the majority of us have been given many negative suggestions. Not knowing how to thwart them, we unconsciously accepted them. Here are some of the negative suggestions. You can't. You'll never amount to anything. You mustn't. You'll fail. You haven't got a chance. You're all wrong. It's no use. It's not what you know, but who you know. The world is going to the dogs. What's the use? Nobody cares. It's no use trying so hard. You're too old now. Things are getting worse and worse. Life is an endless grind. Love is for the birds. You just can't win. Pretty soon, you'll be bankrupt. Watch out. You'll get the virus. You can't trust a soul, etc. Unless, as an adult, you, con you use constructive auto-suggestions, which is a reconditioning therapy, the impressions made on you in the past can cause behavior patterns that cause failures in your personal and social life. Auto-suggestion is a means releasing you from the mass of negativity, negative verbal conditioning that might otherwise distort your life pattern, making the development of good habits difficult. You know, the, the most common uh, thing we've all grown up hearing, and I say all of us with conviction, uh, when you get married, bitta compromise to karna padta hai shaadi mein. Aadmi ko bhi bula jata hai, aurat ko bhi bula jata hai, why? A man has to compromise because a woman's coming in his life, in his family, so you have to make space for her. A woman has been told, you're getting married, bacha, so please make space because aap bahar wale ho. And life is not a bed of roses. Uh, life is not so amazing. It's a bed of roses. You have to compromise. It's the biggest myth fed to all of us. No, we don't have to compromise. If we give love, we'll get love. Whatever we want is possible. Simply give love. Who's told you not to uh, pursue your dreams? 
if I am nice to my in-laws or if they are nice to me, they will not treat me like an outsider or I will not treat them like somebody else's parents. So it's the biggest myth been fed to us. And we are so lucky, all of us are Indians, that we have a system of being grounded with our families, our in-laws, you know, our joint families. We are the blessed lot who really live with the elders. So now if we start saying that a compromise, Karin, no, it's your love for them. Just think of it as love. So, you know, with me, I'm so happy that a lot of us have had good relationships in the evening and the morning batch because now people accept the elders the way they are. You know, what's the difference between your parents and their parents? I mean, who's there? It's ultimately one. Their parents, that's it. Whether it's your husband or your wife's parents or your parents, how does it matter? Parents are parents. Love them, get respect. Siblings are siblings. It really doesn't matter. And when people say life is not this, life is not that, and you know, what do you do alone? What is it? Why do you do alone? Why do you do alone? Every drop in the ocean counts. Imagine millions of people are taking out those drops, drops, drops in the ocean. Will the ocean level go down? So let's understand that we matter. Each life matters. We are the ones who make a change. So let's not discount ourselves. We are really power and let's get that power. Now, how do we contract negative suggestions given to us? Of course, parents unknowingly, knowingly, even elders, even coaches, even teachers have told us, Gav, and we have let that go into our fertile soil of our mind. And we've let that conditioning make it a habit for us. And that habit sometimes is detrimental for our growth. It's okay. The good news is we always have a time to change and evolve. So how do we can't contract negative suggestions? Let's read about it. You can counteract negative suggestions. Pick up the paper any day and you can read dozens of items that could sow the seed of futility, fear, worry, anxiety, and impending doom. If accepted by you, these thoughts of fear could cause you to lose the will for life. Knowing that you can reject all these negative suggestions by giving your subconscious mind constructive auto-suggestions, you counteract all these destructive ideas. Check regularly on the negative suggestions that people make to you. You do not have to be influenced by destructive hetero suggestions. All of us have suffered from it in our childhood and in our teens. If you look back, you can easily recall how parents, friends, relatives, teachers and associates contributed in a campaign of negative suggestions. Study the things said to you and you will discover much of it was in the form of propaganda. The purpose of much of what was said was to control you or instill fear into you. So, when we say this, don't do this, it will happen. Or parents are saying some things. It's because of instilling that fear and that fear stays in you even when you grow up. And you instill the same fear in other people. So you're a part of the vicious chain of the negative suggestions. Let's break the chain. Let's break the pattern. Let's change the page, please. So this propaganda, this pattern is something that we all need to get out of, completely out of our system. Yes, please. This hetero suggestion process goes on in every home, office, factory, and club. You will find that many of these suggestions are for the purpose of making you think, feel, and act as others want you to, and in ways that are to the, their advantage. So some people, even in uh, business families, the elder men or the women, whoever controls the businesses and are training the next generation, try and hold this. So they are threatened when the younger generation comes and makes a change. So please just go, be creative, try something. You will at the max fall, right? In your experiment, you will fail. So what? You'll rise up again. Go create your life the way you want it. You have a belief system? Go for it. Don't have set of suggestions bog you down and bring you down and not create your life the way you want. Now let's read a beautiful story and we'll read this in one go. How a suggestion killed a man. Yes. How a suggestion killed a man. Here is an illustration of hetero suggestion. A relative of mine went to a crystal gray gazer in India who told him that he had a bad heart and predicted that he would die at the next new moon. He began to tell all members of his family about this prediction and he arranged his will. This powerful suggestion entered into his subconscious mind because he accepted it completely. My relative also told me that this crystal gazer was believed to have some strange occult powers and he could do harm or good to a person. He died as predicted 
not knowing that he was the cause of his own death. I suppose many of us have heard similar stupid, ridiculous, superstitious, superstitious stories. Let us look at what happened in the light of our knowledge of the way the subconscious mind works. Whatever the conscious reasoning mind of man believes, the subconscious mind will accept and act upon. My relative was happy, healthy, vigorous and robust when he went to see the fortune teller. She gave him a very negative suggestion, which he accepted. He became terrified and constantly dwelt upon the fact that he was going to die at the next new moon. He proceeded to tell everyone about it and he prepared for the end. The activity took place in his own mind and his own thoughts was the cause. He brought about his own so-called death or rather destruction of the physical body by his fear and expectation of the end. The physical body by uh, the woman who predicted his health, his death, had no more power than the stones and sticks in the field. Her suggestion had no power to create or bring about the end she suggested. If he had known the laws of his mind, he would have completely rejected the negative suggestion and refused to give her words any attention, knowing in his heart that he was governed and controlled by his own thought and feeling. Like tin arrows aimed at a battleship, her prophecy could have been completely neutralized and dissipated without hurting him. The suggestions of others in themselves have absolutely no power. Whatever over you accept the power that you give them through your own thoughts. You have to give your mental consent. You have to entertain the thought. Then it becomes your thought and you do the thinking. Remember, you have the capacity to choose. Choose life. Choose love. Choose health. How wonderful. The last paragraph is super powerful. Of course, the first one is all about how people get conditioned and how they bring on things to themselves. I know of this family in which they had this huge thing in their mind. And this is the first batch that I was coaching. And she told me that all the men in my family died before 50. All the men. She counted 18 men who crossed over. And now she was counting her son for that. And I was like, what are you doing? Just see how suggestion, because just that people start believing, they believe, they believe, and this is what happens. So now how do we counteract these? Let's create our affirmations. Let's choose life. Let's choose love. Let's choose health. Create these affirmations. Mentally give your consent that I give my consent in living a life of my purpose. That I entertain this thought with love and I will do this because this is what I really believe in. Age is in the mind. People say 70, 80, 90, time to go. Who says that? Who says that? Go to Japan, see the super sanitarians there. 110 plus and look at the life with purpose. Look at people, look at the vibrations, energy in them. It's all in our mind. So let's tune our minds. Let's have the power of our mind. Let's read the power of an assumed major premise. The, po the power of an assumed major premise. Your mind works like a syllogism. Sure. This means that whatever major pro pr premise your conscious mind assumes to be true determines the conclusion your subconscious mind comes to in regard to any particular question or problem in your mind. In your premise, if your premise is true, the conclusion must be true, as in the following example. Every virtue is laudable. Kindness is a virtue. Therefore, kindness is laudable. Another example is as follows. All formed things change and pass away. The pyramid of Egypt are formed things. Therefore, Someday, the pyramids will pass away. The first statement is referred to as the major premise, and the right conclusion must necessarily flow the right premise. A college professor who attended some of my science of... Science of Mind lectures in May 1962 at Town Hall, New York, said to me, everything in my life is topsy-turvy. And I have lost health, wealth, and friends. Everything I touch turns out wrong. I explained to him that he should establish a major premise in his thinking, that the infinite intelligence of his subconscious mind was guiding, directing, and prospering him 
spiritually, mentally, and materially. Then his subconscious mind would automatically direct him wisely in the investments, decisions, and also heal his body and restore his mind to peace and tranquility. This, prof uh, this professor formulated an overall picture of the way he wanted his life to be, and this was his major premise. Infinite intelligence leads and guides me in all my ways. Perfect health is mine, and the law of harmony operates in my mind and body. Beauty, love, peace, and abundance are mine. The principle of right action and divine order govern my entire life. I know my major premise is based on the eternal truths of life, and I know, feel, and believe that my subconscious mind responds according to the nature of my conscious mind thinking. He wrote me as follows. So some, people might find, yeah, so some people might find this too strong to be written. With this too heavy play of words. All right, if it's heavy play of words, you go simply. But realize one thing, we have infinite intelligence that we are aware of. We know that that intelligence is there as a soul. It's leading and it's guiding us in all possible ways. Even if you don't know, we will get to know this by the end of this one-to-one -one days because that's one purpose of mind to make you spiritual, that to make you understand that your spirit guides you forever and ever and ever into a life of magnificence. Once you have that connection and you know things are going to unfold, but the health is in your hands, right? Your health, your love is in your hands. Abundance, the feelings of prosperity of abundance are in your hands. So if you believe in them that, you know, you are the creator and wherever you turn, prosperity follows. If you have simple affirmations like I live an abundant life in all realms of my being, simple, magic is done. You're training your subconscious mind into responding to that because that's what you're saying. You've created your affirmations, your short little heter your, you know, your auto suggestions. You are tuned in now. Your mind will respond to it. Come what may. Give yourself 21 days and the mind will respond. Let's see the concluding paragraph of this. He wrote me as follows. I repeated the above statements slowly, quietly and lovingly several times a day, knowing that they were sinking deep down into my subconscious mind and that results must follow. I am deeply grateful for the interview you gave me and I would like to add that all departments of my life are changing for the better. It works. Yeah. So again, our life is in our hands. Whatever we want works. We simply have to account ourselves for it and it works. The last section for the day is the subconscious does not argue controversially. Very beautiful to understand. Let's go with the science as a screen reads for us. The subconscious does not argue controversially. Your subconscious mind is all wise and knows the answers to all questions. It does not argue with you or talk back to you. It does not say, you must not impress me with that. For example, when you say, I can't do this, I'm too old now, I can't meet this obligation, I was born on the wrong side of the tracks, I don't know the right politician, you are impregnating your subconscious with these negative thoughts and it responds accordingly. You're actually blocking your own good, thereby bringing lack, limitation, frustration into your life. When you set up obstacles, impediments, and delays in your conscious mind, you are denying the wisdom and intelligence residing in your subconscious mind. You're actually saying, in effect, that your subconscious mind cannot solve your problem. This leads to mental and emotional congestion, followed by sickness and neurotic tendencies. To realize your desire and overcome your frustration, affirm boldly several times a day. The infinite intelligence which gave me the, this desire leads, guides, and reveals to me the perfect plan for the unfolding my desire. I know the deeper wisdom of my subconscious is now responding, and what I feel and claim within is expressed in the without. There is balance, equilibrium, and equanimity. So it's very important to understand that we all have this balance. We are able to release and realize that life is beautiful and wonderful, but we haven't yet tapped into the energy. We have infinite intelligence and we haven't tapped in it. Why? Because firstly, we never knew. Some people say my intuition is very strong. Some people say my gut feeling is always right. 
Now, these are just your infinite intelligence in your body, which your soul, which your soul, you know, is telling you again and again and again. And that's the higher self. So again, the perfect plan is there made for us. We haven't walked the plan. We haven't talked the plan. We're not even aware of the plan because we haven't intuned. People tune outside your radio stations, right? To hear something. What about your inner channel? When do you tune in that? When do you tap into that potential? When you tap into that, the world becomes a platform where anything and everything is possible. So let's realize that beautiful world. Let's understand, yes. If you say there is no way out, I'm lost. There is no way out of this dilemma. I am stymied. I'm stymied and blocked. You will get no answer or response from your subconscious mind. If you want the subconscious to work for you, give it the right request and attain its cooperation. It is always working for you. It is conditioning your heartbeat this minute and also your breathing. Breathing. It heals a cut on your finger and its tendency is lifeward, forever seeking to take care of you and preserve you. Your subconscious has a mind of its own, but it accepts your patterns of thought and imagery. When you are seeking an answer to a problem, your subconscious will respond, but it expects you to come but it expects you to come to a decision and to a true judgment in your conscious mind. You must acknowledge the answer is in your subconscious mind. However, if you say, I don't think there is any way out, I'm all mixed up and confused, why don't I get an answer? You are neutralizing your prayer. Like the soldier marking time, you do not get anywhere. Still, the wheels of your mind Still the wheels of your mind, relax, let go, and quietly affirm. My subconscious knows the answer. It is responding to me now. I give thanks because I know the infinite intelligence of my subconscious knows all things and is revealing the perfect answer to me now. My, re my real conviction is now setting free the majesty and glory of my subconscious mind. I rejoice that it is so. And thank you so much, Asmeet. You're a fantastic reader. Amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you so much, Ritesh, sir, for showcasing this book. We'll review the highlights tomorrow. And uh, yes, a subconscious of all the answers in the world for all of us. Now we'll move on to our loving ourselves body. We'll, we'll read one section, one beautiful section, which is long, but it's very imperative. That why and how do we have to take our time for our own health? So it's so amazing that all of us can really go forward and reach it. But Asmeet, I want you to lend my, uh, your voice for that one section as well in that book, the third book for the day, because it's a beautiful chapter. And let's understand that how are we investing time and what is the results for that time investment in our own body? So chapter number 30, uh, page 38, taking time for your health is taking time for yourself. And this is really important. Let's go for it. Thank you. Taking time for your health is taking time for yourself. In addition to not wanting to spend money on foods that best nourish their bodies, people often insist that they don't have enough time to prepare whole foods. We completely understand. The three of us have been in a place where you've had to decide how to fit preparing food into busy schedules with work, families, paying the bills, running errands, business, travel, and more. Heather spent over 15 years working in the corporate world and due to job offers and promotions was in constant learning curve to master a higher level of responsibility. In short, she was a self-described workaholic. When she learned that recovery from bulimia meant eating healthier food and giving her body high quality nutrients, she was working as an executive for 12 hours per day and most weekends. At the time, her typical grocery shopping included all packaged and processed food, and meal times revolved around microwaves and fast food windows. She had to completely overhaul her life, particularly the way she related to grocery shopping and preparing food at one of the busiest and most stressful times in her career. What was so what one thing is in case, yeah, one thing I speak. So if everyone is into fresh food, fantastic. If you're into microwave, if you're into fast food or tetra pack food or something, please be careful because this is really going to be fatal later for us. 
Okay, let's continue, please. What happened was interesting. She got guidance from a nature, natural health coach and started with a few easy recipes for soups and vegetables she had never tried before and looked up how to prepare them. She asked for advice at the health food store on how to choose produce. In fact, she had to ask for a lot of help at home from her husband and at work from her employees and colleagues, which was very unfamiliar for her. She started working smarter so she could leave work early, earlier and stop working on the weekends. Yet no one even noticed that she was working less. Her better health and state of mind allowed her to be more productive in less time. And she developed a love for cooking because it was the first time she was doing something so kind for herself. She was, talk she was taking the time to heal and to show herself that she mattered more than the self-imposed beliefs about all the work she had to do. That year, Heather got promoted and her team was most productive in the company. Not because she worked harder, but because she was so much healthier. She had a healthy body and a stronger mind that was willing to set boundaries and create work-life balance, which she implemented in her team as well. Heather's biggest discovery was that if you put yourself first, you can find ways to focus on what's important and to take good care of people who rely, upon, who rely on you as a leader or even a parent. Feeling good has a ripple effect with many benefits. Alia and Louis have similar stories of learning how, how much they matter when it comes to making healthy food. As we write this book, Alia is in her first two years with her first baby. She's bringing him up with healthy whole foods, which often means that they are made from scratch. And she's running a growing business. Uh, excuse me. Can I have a bigger, uh, quite uh, zoomed uh, view, please? Uh, uh, it's uh, Ritesh, sir, can't manage that. I'll take over, uh, Smith. Thank you. I know this book is kind of a big, so it takes. Thank you so much for trying. Anyway, so, so like Heather, Halia has had to learn to ask for help from her husband, friends and family. She also makes gardening and preparing food part of the bonding process with her son. She brings him into the kitchen where he stands in a toddler safe learning tower to watch and participate in what she's doing. One of Halia's greatest lessons in, in having a baby is that you have to accept where you are in this moment. Everyone has something or several things that complete that compete for their time. Perhaps you feel you have so much to do so and so little time. Remember, this is only a thought and thoughts can be changed. If you have a goal to get healthy and want to prepare whole foods, start by accepting where you are and then think about how you can incorporate small steps into your routine. Perhaps there are things which you can let go of or people you can ask for help. So I can tell you all people who are looking at losing weight, my course in my house, cooks make the food, not the women in the house. So now Preeti wanted to have healthy food and cook wasn't used to making healthy food. She started cutting her own vegetables. She put on her own music and she sorted her own with the best of olive oil that she wanted to create her food. In. And she lost her weight and she had such a good time bonding with her kitchen and her time. So if you really have time, my brother did the same in London. Mom, I, I'm sure you remember. He used to go and cook up his own food and never go for you know packaged food. So if you really want, time is just in the mind. You say, I don't have time for this. There are so, so many men who are chefs who go in the kitchen and wearing the aprons and doing cooking. So if you can cook the freshest food, nothing like it. So just give yourself the gift of life by cooking something which whatever grows is if you eat, you're really giving yourself a great time. Also, I really want to say now we talk about the blue zone. It's also going to be covered in detail in Ikigai, but let's talk about it. To that end, we cannot emphasize enough the importance of a tribe. According to the blue zones by Dan Gutner, the world's longest living populations all found or were born into a group of friends who supported their healthy habits and who helped them when they needed it. Knowing that they could ask for help and receive it when needed was key to feeling safe and living longer. So if you're not sure on how healthy approach to healthy eating, you're having trouble finding this time, call on your friends, a support group or your social network to get ideas and support. 
maybe you have a kitchen maybe you have a friend who knows how to cook and would love to come to your kitchen and help you out louis is brilliant in creating a tribe of like minded people she's always pulling people together to prepare food and have fun in the kitchen whenever she's learning something new she brings in people who can teach her and her tribe helpful concepts tips and techniques she's always willing to learn new things and be the beginner which is one of the keys to her health and longevity so in our group we have got uh, monish and kuldeep ji is like the next level inspiration he's bought this machine he's got his grains he's churned them lentils into oils sab organic kar rahe now he's growing a organic garden and believe me he was not a part of this world at all but thanks to these beautiful readings of these fantastic books we can create a tribe within ourselves you know we can create like minded people life is easy when you are together when you support each other you complement each other you move ahead in each other's world and with each other since louis is so busy with teaching and traveling she uses a calendar and schedules in time for what matters to her which includes her time in the grocery store and in the kitchen preparing healthy food this is a great tip give your time in the yatesha okay i'll read from the book then give your time and in the kitchen and at the grocery store a slot on your calendar instead of leaving it on a long to do list that might never get done this is a great way to prioritize your self care and make sure it happens so tomorrow we can read about the client stories maybe one and tomorrow we can read about how we can empower ourselves and becoming our own health advocates it's very important to understand that if we believe in a concept life can unfold and if you're believing that you know cooks are making those kind of typical foods for you the reusing the fried oil into your vegetables if you're okay with that then it's fine but if you think that your health isn't so great and you want to work on it this book kind of makes us understand that very easily so if all of you can read the mary chapter maybe you can send it as part of the assignment it's just a like story so maybe if you can others will tomorrow so we'll decide tomorrow itself what do we have to do So Ritesh sir, thank you so much. Let's have the heart thought. And somebody new who's never read for us, can please raise their hand to read the heart thought. Let's see what blessing for the day is coming our way. Parul Gupta, yes, yes. And Asmit, thank you. Fantastic reading. Absolutely soulful. Loved it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> business our business is a divine idea if you work where there is love and joy and laughter and you appreciate it you are going to do such a good job and work twice as hard you will find that you have more talents and abilities than you ever knew you had again going back to the fact people who are into businesses or even at home if you start complimenting your staff your people around you and you make a very beautiful atmosphere you will be amazed at what can come out the productivity will increase and a lot of stuff will happen yes parul please take it forward our business is a divine idea page number 27 good morning good morning our business is a divine idea our business is a divine idea in the one mind created out of divine love and maintained and sustained by love every employee has been attracted by the action of love for it is his and her divine right place here at this one this point in time and space the divine harmony permeates us all and we flow together in a most productive and joyous way it is the action of love that brought us to this particular place the divine action divine right action operates every aspect of a business divine intelligence intelligence creates our products and services the divine love brings to us those who can be helped by that which we so lovingly do sorry we release all old patterns of complaining and condemning for we know it is our consciousness that creates our circumstances in the business world we know and declare that it is possible to successfully operate our business according to the divine principles and we lovingly use our mental tools to live and experience our lives ever more abundantly we refuse to be limited in any way by human mind thinking 
the divine mind is our business consultant and has plans for us which we have not yet dreamed. Our lives are filled with love and joy because, uh, because our business is a divine idea. And so it is. How wonderful. So everything is fine if you create a tool, whatever you want to create, because you are guided by the divine being. So, all right, everyone, thank you for coming this morning. Now we'll meditate. Before that, very important, today's a Sunday. If possible, please, please, please do your um, path of aggression. Uh, too much is happening. So Sunday is a day you can't do so much on a Sunday. You can't give like two hours to one, one, two, one, series, right? So if you can start doing every day, it'll be lovely. Especially the higher self takes about fifth max day. Just do it whenever possible. Just play it. Try and see what images are coming. Has anyone ever got a higher uh, self's name till now? Uh, people who are with me in the unified section, don't tell me. I know a lot of you have got your higher self's name and meaning and purpose. People who haven't got, please keep working. Not for desperation. Just flow. Just do it. Hear it. If you, Sakshi has got it. How wonderful that. Sakshi, I'd like to hear you, please. So can you put yourself on, can you raise your hand on the box? If you've got your higher self's name, fantastic. And Naveen has got it. How wonderful, Naveen. Please raise your hand. People who aren't with me in Unified, and if they've got it, I'm very proud of them. So yes. And how did this happen? Let's understand. I am so proud of you. Thank you so much, Naveen. Please tell us. I passed yeah. the buck to you. Can you unmute? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Morning, Prachi. Uh, so actually, I've been uh, kind of meditating for quite some time now. And I'm really uh, happy to right. attend uh, this session with Rigu. And uh, really, it's been benefiting. So, uh, but uh, though I kind of uh, got these connections earlier, but I never asked it the name. And mm -hmm. uh, when you told, uh, I asked it and I found the name, uh, its name is Anant. Wow. Amazing. Infinite, huh? Amazing. Okay. And uh, have you for some guys, some answer? Uh, can you hear me? Okay, so no problem. So I was just asking that if you have had a name, probably have a conversation also now. Believe the conversation is beautiful. Be beautiful. You'll be amazing. Okay, yes, one share if they need to. And also, if the name comes once, uh, again, meditate, again, meditate, again. Let it three, four times, the name will come. A lot of times, a lot of words keep coming, you know, which is so meditating. One day the name will come. So in the morning batch, we had uh, Anjuji Australia. It came like a whisper in her ear, like Aditya. And she's like, you know, I know the name. But she's never been in India as such. And she's never heard. So things, for things like a solid way. When I got the name Kamal, it was very, very solid. So you just see how it's coming and you'll understand yourself how life is unfolding for you. So thank you, everyone. And just work on this. So there are two things that I really believe in, uh, which I'll give you priority, with, which I think as uh, your course seeker, what I think is important. First is PLR, past life regression, because it's very important to understand that past life regression will help you uh, connect with your purpose. So what purpose are you born with? The, you know, the healer takes you from one point to another point. She'll tell you that what is it from this life that you're taking in your this life? So like, if I was, say, whoever, and now I'm Prachi, what do I bring that quality in this life? So you will come closer to your purpose. So I think PLR is very important. Second, your higher self. If you've done these two, pretty much you're sorted. Then everything is sorted. So just do these two on a priority. The movies, of course, if you can, you can. Please do it. If you can't, it's okay. But these two, please go for it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's watch our backs now. Let's watch our posture. Our back straight, our feet firmly placed on the ground, our cross leg, our hands in a gyan mudra, the Buddha pose, or facing heavenwards. Our eyes closed. Let's wear a smile. Let's inhale in a deep breath. This time, no emotions, just simply observe your breath. 
Let it expand. Feel it inside you. Hold it. And very gradually exhale. Inhale. Hold it. And exhale. The third time for this morning, let's inhale this beautiful breath, thanking it from the bottom of our hearts. Fill your body with this wonderful air, this breath of life. Exhale ever so gently. Life is magical. Life is a blessing. Life is abundant. We are a blessing. We are magic. We our love. Wherever we turn, prosperity follows. We are open and receptive to all the love, to all the goodness, to all the abundance in our universe. Whatever we want happens. We simply are believers in the law of attraction. We believe whatever we radiate, we get in abundance. The more we give, the more we get. The more we spend, the more we earn. The more we share, the more we care. Our life unfolds every moment as if it's a miracle. Pleasure food, pleasurable body, pleasurable relationships, pleasurable life. Our life is what we are making out of it every single moment. Let's invest in this beautiful life of ours by sowing the seeds of love, by sowing the seeds of success, by sowing the seeds of spirituality, and by loving it with the purpose, by living it with the intention, a sankal. Let's understand what we are. We may have, we may be a man or a woman. We may be from some part of the country. We may be in some business or another, we may be a homemaker, but ultimately we are all souls living as a body, as a name. Our soul is all about love. Our soul is all about energy, because energy is the only cosmic factor in the world. Let's tune into this energy, this love, infinite wisdom, infinite intelligence, infinite love. Let's expand ourselves by intertwining and going inward, finding our truest self, our higher self. The magic awaits us. Let's knock on the door and open it. Imagine opening a door of magnificence, a divine door with energy around it. It's got the golden glow. Imagine just shoving the door a bit and opening it inside. Now you're in a world of magnificence. The golden glow floods you. You're enveloped in a ball of golden fire and energy. You have the warmth feeling in your body. Feel it. As you're walking, you're walking in a ball. The ball surrounds you. The ball of love. If you're sitting, the ball of love is still around you. You are flowing in love. Wherever you turn, love is there in abundance. In this state of being, if I question my higher self, I get all the answers. And this time in this world, I'm not dependent upon sleep. I merely have to close my eyes, breathe in thrice, 
pose a question and hear the inner voice. And that inner voice is my higher self. Whatever I seek, I get. Imagine a life where everything is right. And that life is yours forever and ever. You would never go wrong because your higher self only gives you the right advice. Imagine a world of no expecting from anyone, no ego, nothing. Mere gratitude, mere love, love for life. Beat your food, whatever you eat, it will benefit you because your body will only take what is required and that will be for love. Imagine working and making the right decision and getting results as profits. That life is yours. Simply go inward. Imagine a life where you are loved unconditionally by everyone around you. Nobody says anything negative. It's only positivity. Imagine yourself loving them, hugging them, appreciating them. Imagine this beautiful life. Imagine having your higher self much, much, much larger than you. See yourself that aura around you, that energy. Now just imagine that this energy and this love is your higher self. He or she has embodied you. Some people call it it, whoever. Doesn't matter. Call it the higher self. Your higher self surrounds you with love. You're protected by the divine cosmic love. What more can we ask for? This is our life. The door is open. You can walk out of it, but knowing that this divine love protects you for life. And this is who we are in reality, a spiritual being, finding our true love, our spirit's actual reality, and that spirituality for us. Let's love. Let's understand our love. Let our virtues expand. Let us evolve each time with spirituality and love. Let's live a life of magnificence. So be it. So it is. So it is. So it is. Let's bow down our heads in gratitude to planet Earth, Mother Earth. Dear Mother Earth, I am so honored to be living in you. As I keep my foot on you every morning, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to walk in you, to live a life of abundance on you. You nurture me with every possible quality, be it food, be it love, be it the place I live in, or whatever I am. Thank you for making me a part of you. I'm truly grateful as never before. I am one with you. Today, I invite three virtues in me. Self-exploring, let me go inward. It's a soulful Sunday. Let me touch my soul. Let me just go and find my higher self. Let me go in my past life and see what's my purpose for this life. Is it only about earning money, earning respect? Is it only that? Or do I have another purpose, a larger picture, which I'm unable to focus on? Let me focus and let me flow. I invite in me today more of support. I need support today. Please support me in my endeavors to go inward. And the third virtue, please invite and give me and bless me with time. Time for myself. Self-love is the most un unconditional form of love. Let me have time to go inward. And yes, after I've done this all, let me have my own sangha to share my magic with. How wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's hold our hands together. Thank our life, past, present, and future for being so glorious.
Let's open our hands and thank the universe, expand them. We are the blessed people, the blessed Sangha, because we know our universe has our back. Life has our back. The divinities up there are showering us with their love and blessings. The angels are always showing their presence to us. The guardians are protecting us in their cosmic prayer. And the cosmos, well, you are fantastic. Thank you for your Leela and making us part of you. How wonderful. Bring your hands at the heart level, expand them. Say to yourselves, I am love. I am light. I am abundant. Wherever I turn, prosperity follows. I am open and receptive to love, kindness, compassion, joy, understanding, infinite intelligence, infinite wisdom, and lots of abundance. Thank you, dear universe. So it is. Bring your hands together. Once again, put them together. Energize them by rubbing them. Feel the energy. Bless your conscious subconscious mind, taking you to the inward journey. Bless your face, your ears, your neck, foot pipe, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, hands, nails, upper back, middle back, spinal cord, lower back, hips, lungs, and invite this love, this breath, to be there with all. Let people breathe. Love, feel your heart full of love. Bless your liver, your stomach, gallbladders, kidneys, intestines, uterus if you have, sexual organs, excretory organs, thighs, knees, calves, ankles, Heels, soles to your feet, two fingernails. Come back up again, hand in front of your hearts, hold them together. Dear beautiful body, dear trillions of cells, dear circulation system of my blood, glands, muscles, tissues, fibers, bones, my skin that protects me. Thank you for healing me every day. Thank you for working on your optimum best. We are organs. You all are exemplary. And the way you heal my body, can you please take away all that's unplugged, that's all that's cluttered in my body? Maybe the negativity of emotions and thoughts, maybe any diseases that may be manifested, or maybe they are there right now. And the weight, we don't need it. None of us need anything extra and anything negative. Let's unflutter our bodies ever so beautifully. Let the unnecessary flow. And so it is. And dear body, now I wish to share my love, my light, my healings of blessings and abundance with my Sangha, their loved ones, and the world around me. Please allow me that energy. Let me share my blessings. Love, light, and blessings. Ritu, Karishma, Mehek, Hina, Nehal, Anamika, Sapna, Alona, Nitin, Pratimaji, Sangeeta, Radhika Kaya, Prakashan Jikisha, Shubhra, Mudita, Jitendraji, Punam, Dikwai Naveen, Asmeet, Ajay and Anju, Siddhartan Mandana, Shivangi, Yashpi, Archana, Yanji, Ushaji, Chandra, Mitu and Bhavan, Shelly, Minakshi, Anika, Tisha, Radhniji, Akshay Nankita, Rajiv Ji, Pail Ji, Mom, Sunita Ji, Rohini Chopsi, Shivani, Sanya, Priya, Kavita, Neha, Puneet, Puja, Radhika, Ruchika, Parul, Richa, Monica, Seema, Harpreet, Kripa, Shilpa, Riksha, Ashish, Richa, Badina, Alifya, Parul, Shruti, Tina, Kachi Divan, Anchal, Neelam, Sakshi, Ankur, Saita, Sakshi, Nisha, Nikita, Kuldeepji, Kishan, Amit, 
शालू श्रुति रितेश सा रीना नेहा रीमा शालू गौरव अक्षय खंडोजा रितेश सर मोहन मंदुवन पदाय इफ आई मिस एनी वन सईता अग्रवाल निकिता अग्रवाल कुलदीप जी निशा आई एम योर मिस सो थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग इन पीना सो थैंक यू एवरीवन लेट्स मेक आवर लाइव्स मैजिकल एंड लेट्स हैव ईच अदर्स बैक रिमेंबर द मोर वी गिव द मोर वी गेट सो दियर कैटलिस्ट एंड बूस्टर्स if some sangha mitra is not coming online not for the sessions the cameras are closed please call them up check with them what is it that worries them and if you are unable to get the right answer evoke the right answer please let me know because i want each sangha mitra to be there with us in the journey so is it there some reason that they're not coming for the live session but going virtual is that a practice for them or is that just something just temporary let's hold them up and let's remember sunday is a good time to pick up the phone and call a lot of you are going on group calls very often so do it if you really want to do it it's not a compulsion you can just meet once in a week also it's fine the idea is for you to be bonding i just want the sub sanghas to get your energy center so you know you're not realizing right now if you really bond well these sangha will be for your life because they will be like minded a core group where you share your energy it doesn't matter which part of the country you're coming from which part of the world you're coming from as long as you're one in spirituality you're there forever so just understand this and get this very loud and clear that we must be there for each other if i'm unable to write a blessing and i'm part of your sangha then why have i not been able to write because if i write my blessings yeah it could not be probably the morning session okay and one person had asked me that you know what is the right time to write blessings so first thing that i always say in the morning when we do is pick up and start writing your gratitude all right uh, so uh, start your manifestation start your day with manifestation and then come down to the session that's it blessings can be after the session don't wake up too early if you are not comfortable but if your body says i'm comfortable waking up early write your gratitude also in the morning but should be done in the first 3 hours is what I, what i truly believe in so thank you thank you thank you we are going in a very beautiful inward journey plr if possible i said if possible movie if possible only if possible and don't compromise in a family time family is the biggest investment these days and just go for it if you are in a lockdown and every day is a sunday then is different so you know the best thank you thank you thank you any questions any sharings i'm happy to hear anyone so if anybody has anything to share please go ahead and share we do have 5 minutes and uh, thank you you all are rock stars i'm loving the creative flow i'm loving your inward journey and i'm loving everything about you all so thank you for being part of it really makes it magical so all right i'm happy that there are no questions that means we all know that we have the power inside us to have all the questions we are all hand holding each other i'm not the one ashish we are all hand holding we are all you know here and of course we have two three new joiny uh, entries today and uh, yesterday and they have been part of our first 12 13 sessions which were complimentary and they took a little time to process the payment and they've ensured me that they will cover these four days of backlog which were not aired to them so that's why they're part of it i'm not putting them right now into any group until they tell me to so it's okay if people don't want to be part of the group even for you if you don't want to be part of the group and if it is too much for you please let me know all i believe in that if we have a group for being accountable we can do so much more better if there is no hand holding or guidance or no you know accountability i may go off wired because i'm new in the journey of spirituality is what i believe so that's my belief if that's different from yours please feel free and let me know i may be a coach but i'm definitely a course seeker always ready and open and receptive to your criticism to your ideas to your feelings so please be free and just message me if you want to speak to me pop in a email i will call you back thank you thank you thank you for sharing your love light and abundance take care have a soulful sunday we'll see each other tomorrow on a magical monday so it is lots of love light and abundance thank you ritesh sir for being a rock star thank you amrita thank you sanjeev sir and of course by um, shweta for having my back thank you thank you thank you